Now, with access to NHS dentistry at an all-time low and the cost of private care at an all-time high, our oral health appears to be in a very poor state. Faced with crippling dentistry bills and unable to find an NHS dentist, dozens of people here in the West are now flying to Eastern Europe to get treatment. We sent Patrick O'Hagan to Budapest to investigate what some are calling the great dentistry ripoff. And for those of you a little squeamish about bad teeth, you might want to look away just for a few seconds. British teeth are seen as a bad joke by Americans. Decades of financial neglect within the NHS means we probably have the worst mouths in Europe. Thousands of professionals have just deserted NHS dentistry for private practice. There, it's more likely to be the bill rather than the drill that will bring tears to your eyes. But there is an answer, a new trend in the West, dental tourism. The internet, combined with cheap flights, have provided a solution for those faced with hefty bills from private clinics. From Bristol, you can fly to Budapest in just over two hours, where you can save £300 on just one crown, enough to pay for your trip. But would you go? I would be a bit scared going abroad. You would be scared? Yeah. What would you be scared of with Hungary? Not so much Hungary, but foreign doctors in case they didn't know what they were doing. I've just come back from Prague and there's nothing, nothing wrong with Eastern Europe. Yeah. And you'd be happy to trust your teeth to a Hungarian dentist? Yeah. What's wrong with him? Simon Perchel lost several teeth in the office. His wife, Veronica, a Hungarian dental nurse, suggested he had his broken teeth restored in Budapest. He saved thousands of pounds. He told his friends, and by word of mouth, quickly he built a successful referral business. It's a great destination to come to, certainly, Budapest. It's a, a very interesting city. Prejudices are certainly not founded, um, and certainly through my personal experience, um, I certainly found that out. The materials are fantastic, the qualifications are the same, um, the training is identical. Um, the one big difference is the amount of experience that these dentists have. Um, these people have been servicing Austrians and Swiss and Germans for 15 years. The volume of work is just huge here, and that's got to be good. So how much can you save? In Britain, a porcelain crown may cost £550 in a private clinic. In Budapest, the same thing costs £150. Root treatment in England may cost up to £210 a tooth. It's a third of that in Hungary. Composite fillings costing £100 here are 40 in Budapest, and a panoramic x-ray of your jaw, which costs 30 here, is likely to be thrown in for free. Everything that you can get now in the market is here. The X-rays are uh, digital and, and uh, computer planning program. I have to place two pins yes. into the uh, trees. Budapest is an absolute jewel and it's a really well kept secret. For decades, German, Swiss and Austrian tourists have been flocking here to enjoy a weekend break and get their teeth done on the cheap at the same time. At last, budget airlines have allowed Brits to come here and do the very same thing. It really takes the pain out of dentistry. Patrick O'Hagan in Budapest for the West tonight. Let's speak to uh, Peter Ward, Chief Executive of the British Dental Association. Uh, Mr Ward, thanks for joining us. It's appalling, isn't it, that uh, people have to travel abroad to get treatment? Well, I mean, it's difficult to know about specific particular circumstances, but clearly it is a, a very... Uh interesting development, isn't it, when people find that that's their only alternative? Well, exactly. It's probably it's more than interesting, isn't it? It's because people have decided they can't get the service they want here, so they've got to get on a plane and go to Eastern Europe to get a similar treatment. Well, I mean, that's down to personal choice, isn't it? I mean, we, dentists in UK are well qualified, well trained, and are keen to work with the families that they've worked with for many years and continue to deliver a very high quality of service. Well, whilst you're saying that's the case, the people that we've spoken to say that isn't their experience. It seems to be cheaper and better service overseas. Well, uh, that's very much a personal perspective, isn't it? I mean, I can, I can give you any range of uh, illustrations of very high quality practitioners providing very high quality care and continuing to do so to, to large numbers of families and patients that they've treated for many years. But clearly, you must accept there is a problem here, otherwise we wouldn't have these examples of people going abroad. If they could get the service they wanted, they wouldn't need to. Well, uh, th that's a, it's a personal choice. People travel for all sorts of reasons now, don't they? But I, I understand the point you're making, and clearly there is an issue, and, and the principal issue is one of a shortage of dental manpower which has been substantially exacerbated by the recent contractual difficulties that have been initiated by the government. So, so what's the government playing at then if, if it knows there's this problem? Is it, is it trying to privatise uh, dentistry by stealth? 
We really don't know. I mean, the, the, the government's intended aims or stated aims were to improve access and to enhance um, availability of treatment for all members of the public. With the recent changes that were introduced on the 1st of April, 2,000 dentists who'd previously been committed to the NHS decided that they could no longer sustain it under the new rules and so have, have elected to provide care under different arrangements for their patients. Okay, Peter Ward, thanks very much for your time. And tomorrow in the second of Patrick's exclusive reports, we meet Tom Kempster from Exmoor, who's saving £10,000 by travelling to Hungary.